This miracle, though, excuse me, is incredible because this was God pursuing me. Now, back in the 80s, my first husband and I separated, and I'm not going to go into he said, she said. I don't do that because God knows we're both sinners. But I did try. I did try to hold on to my marriage. I did try to fight for it. <clears throat> uh, but I didn't have enough help. I was isolated. I was away from a lot of people. And when you're going through such suffering, do not isolate yourself. I kind of chased everybody away because I didn't feel worthy to be helped. I felt like it was my fault. And then I realized later, when you love Dear ones, with all your heart, mind, and soul, somebody, you never fail. You've never failed, even if the marriage breaks up, because you did your best. But let me just say this. This miracle, I want you to hear the whys and the wherefores of why I'm sharing it. It gave me a purpose for living. Back in the 80s, we were in a lot of pain. Our marriage was disintegrating. We had three young children. And uh, the youngest was around uh, three and the oldest was around uh, 13 or 14 at the time. And what happens is we went up to Northern California to stay in um, Angel's Camp with some friends, hoping that if we got away, it would help our marriage. It didn't. We didn't go to counselors or anything like that. So we just went up there with our pain. It doesn't matter where you go, you just bring your pain with you. Well, he had to go back to work, so I, I said I'd stay up longer to think. Well, the longer I was away, the more depression hit me until I started spiraling down. What happened was, is that miracles started to happen. So I was thinking these very bad thoughts taking my life because I felt my children were ruined. I was a woman in the church that was beloved and respected by people, shared my faith. Uh, so was my husband at the time. And, oh, they used to call people like that pillars of the church. One woman, when she found out we broke up, actually fainted in the middle of a supermarket. I had to catch her. This is how shocking it was. And I felt if it was that shocking to her, what was it going to do to my kids, my family, and to the heart of God? I was ashamed. I felt like Cain running through the jungles with this mark on my head that I had killed my brother Abel. I was devastated. You can't, I can't tell you where this depression came from. It, it's like it had fingers and a head and legs. It just gripped a hold of me. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't think. I, I didn't sleep. I just didn't want to live anymore. And uh, I did a couple of crazy things, but God kept saving me. And finally, my friend took me to her pastor, one of the sensible ones, and dragged me there and the pastor who had a wife in a wheelchair and was losing his church and different things he's praying for me and I go now that touched me he was going through hell he put his head on my knee and wept he said Lauren don't give up don't give up perhaps he was talking to himself too don't you see, beloveds, we're all in this together. We have to do this together. And night and we stand, divide and we fall. We have to keep our hope and our faith going and our purpose for living. Let me tell you what I learned about the purpose for living. Wow, the power of some people's prayer life is incredible. Because this is what happened next. I got on the plane at Sacramento. Then I switched planes. When you get off the plane, you walk across the field. And I went up the stairway to get on the second plane, which is in San Francisco. And I felt an overwhelmingly powerful presence of something. 
You have to understand, I'm in deep depression. So I didn't, I didn't even know that it was God that I was feeling. And what happened was, is when I got on the plane, this man came up to me and he said, um, can I sit next to you? And I said, it's a free world. At that point, I didn't like men. I wanted to reject them. I didn't trust them. I was suspicious of them. And I was just ready to snap at that point. But he reached across and pulled down a shade because it was still during the day. And he goes, and it was a hot day. And he says, I could see you don't fly much. He says, may I? And he closed the window and put me, he sheltered me. It was very odd. I felt all of a sudden like somebody cared for me. And he began to talk. And so suddenly he got very serious and he goes, why do you want to end your life? And I said, whoa. And I turned around and I looked at him and I said, are you an angel? And he said, no, I'm a human being like you. I just get these feelings and kind of think things in my thoughts and I really believe God's guiding me and speaking to me to speak to you and I yourself you can't take your life away only God has the right he gave the life and he's the one that takes it I says well then what's my purpose then why should I live on and he said just a moment I'm going to go and pray. And he went in the bathroom and he prayed. And he came back after a few minutes and he said, you know, when you got on the plane, there was a great light around you. And I said, God, there's a great light around that woman. Why? He says, because she's trying to end her life. She needs to be protected from herself. She's in danger. You've got to go talk to her. She was still in danger, beloved. Because we kill ourselves slowly. Every day when we get up and say those things like, I don't want to be here, I don't want to live, I can't do this. We speak these self-defaming things, these self-loathing things to ourselves. We are killing ourselves softly and slowly every day. We can't do that anymore. And I'm not talking about just speaking affirmative words. It's way beyond that what I'm talking about. He said he went in the bathroom and he said he heard more. And I said, well, what did you hear? And at this point, I was interested. And I was receiving him. And I was believing there was a miracle going on. And he said, Lauren, you have to live. You have to live. And I said, why? What's my purpose now? And he said, because there are many waiting for your love. Beloved, there are many waiting for your love. Don't you know, just like in that movie, It's a Wonderful Life, when Clarence said, he said, remember when Jimmy Stewart didn't want to live anymore because all the money was gone and his uh, business collapsed and he might have to go to jail for it and he was terrified for failing everybody and he, he was trying to take his life and Clarence said don't you see you've been given the most wonderful gift a chance to see your life what would it be like if you weren't here and the difference that you have made in your life and it's the same with you if God took away everybody and everything you knew and everything that you touched in your life and you came back into this world and you'd see what each person how they were affected by your presence and and how you you touch their lives and how you change their lives and how you gave them hope and you, you gave them love you wouldn't be feeling the way you're feeling and write the poems the way you do and sing the way you do and uh, photograph the way you do and Love your children the way you do, and love the elderly the way you do. Beloved, only you.
can make the change that you need to make in the world that is only your change. <clears throat> this is a true miracle. God sent me a messenger on a plane to tell me that my purpose of living was that many people were waiting for my love. And maybe you're one of them. This is Mamma Mia Love. And until next time, Coraggio Avanti. Forward with courage. Thank you.